to the Holes With Me Mark podcast show, and today I am talking to Ariel Grace. Ariel is a natural in, in, intuitive. Since he was five years old, he's been able to see and communicate with spirit guides, angels, and other unseen beings. In the late 1990s, she became a Reiki master teacher and received her date ordained under the order of Mel Etrictic, I could probably said that wrong. The order of Mel Etrictic <laughs> is a spiritual organization where we seek health and well-being for all beings everywhere. In 2004 and 2005, Erin learned that the art of soul retrieval, a way to grace. Many times our current life issues blockages are due to past life event or traumas. During soul revival, she takes you back to those lifetimes so you can correct the situations, therefore correcting your current life too. It's amazing to be able to watch as you go, able to watch as you go back to your life on track, get your back, life on back on track. The year 2010 brought Ariel into helping people with the growth of the consciousness of being Dick Shan blessings. Ariel Grace is also honoured to be a trance channel for the Akaria for the divine compliments of the archangels. Some of the, the divine beings, aerial channels, are Mary Magdalene, Lord Michael Mich- 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 and the goddess Venus. He has also practiced all over the United States, assisting people with connecting to their heart's desire and their happily ever afters. She loves bringing the energy of hope to the people she meets and works with. Ariel is constantly learning, growing in her practice as a soul coach and show... So we view revival practice. Ariel is also an author. Her writings can be found on the Clarity 101 blog. This blog has handy ideas to assist you on your spiritual path. In addition to her many speaking engagements, Ariel is an online radio host. You can join her on Sunday nights where she hosts a gang of girls leading you into new dimensions and metaphysical teachings. And hi, Ariel. Hi. Can you tell me a little about what um, the Rye Revival consists of? Um, can you repeat that for me, please? Can you t- tell me a little bit about what... Um, you say you, you can um, do revival? I do soul retrieval. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a soul retrieval practitioner. So what I do is um, I assist people with releasing past issues that are um, like holding them up in this lifetime. So if somebody has a poverty issue, um, they're always in poverty. They can't seem to move out of poverty. Then what we do is we go into other lifetimes where their poverty really just, you know, um, basically killed them. You know, because it was just so hard, their lives were so hard. We go back to those lifetimes and we clear out the the sadness. We clear out the feeling of um, not worthy. We clear out a lot of different things. And we also go into some religious lifetimes because religious orders um, ask us to take vows of poverty. And so we might even have to go there and clear that vow. So that they can start, um, you know, they can start being abundant and prosperous. So, uh, soul retrieval, it usually takes between an hour to two hours to do, depending on how many lifetimes we go into. And um, it's, it, it is a, it's pretty it's pretty intense. <laughs> it is. But once you're through it, once you've cleared some of that stuff out, you know, other lifetimes as well start to straighten up to where uh, you make better decisions in other lifetimes. You make better decisions now so that whatever it is that's bothering you or whatever it is that's holding you back, that blockage is removed so that you can move forward and enjoy your life. How do you go about preparing yourself for this? Um, Usually for soul retrieval, what I do is um, I sit down with the person's name, you know, because usually I have their name, and 
And about an hour before the appointment, I sit down and I just connect with um, mostly with Lord Melchizedek and I connect with Lady Nada. And we sit down and they show me like what lifetimes need to be corrected, what lifetimes need to be healed, so that um, once we start, once I start with my client, it moves pretty quickly. I, I see, see here you said you've been, you've had this gift since you was five years old. Did it feel scary at the time? No. Nope. No, because when I see, when I see spirits, they don't look scary. Um, they look like people, you know, so sometimes like if I go into a place like, uh, there's there's some places that I've been to in Virginia specifically where it seems like there's uh, there's a um, there's a reenactment going on. <laughs> so you see lots of spirits walking around and stuff doing their thing, and um, it looks like there's people from like the Victorian era, from uh, some war era, from you know, the Revolutionary War era, and so they're all kind of mixed in, and they don't look mean or anything like that, they just look like themselves. Some of it is residual energy, um, some of it is intelligent energy, so it just, the intelligent energy looks a lot brighter to me than the residual, so um, they're not scary they just look like normal peeps in their era of clothing, attire. Yeah. Now, those people are saying at present, now, I, I do believe there's such a thing as demonic possession, but I don't think that every bad ghost is a demon. That I think that's a bit of a myth. No. Now, I, um, I, I, I feel like there's a lot of that, a lot, a lot of talking about that, and there are other beings on this planet that, you know, peeps, <laughs> peeps call demons, and they're not. Um, but uh, to really see or to really see someone possessed or a demon haunting um, a home or an area, it's not as common as what, you know, what is, what is said. I, I, I've been to a lot of places, a lot of haunted places, and yeah, the spirits are pissed, but once you start talking to them and letting them know they can leave, you know, they calm down and they leave. Um, but demon, demonic stuff, I mean, in my 20 years of um, investigating or my 20 years of connecting with spirits, I've only seen two two places actually it was one place and one person and um you know my my guides and angels are just like turn around leave and so i do i turn around leave i don't i don't want anything to do with it that's not my job there's demonologists out there and i always recommend people read up on demonology educate themselves so that they know what it is and what they're dealing with because People should not be messing with that kind of stuff. They need to leave that alone, you know. And I always tell people, too, do not buy haunted objects. Do not take any objects from a haunted home or a haunted area. Don't do that because you're just inviting in that kind of craziness. And you don't need it. Nobody needs it. Nobody wants it. And certainly the demon doesn't want it. So, you know, education is key so that you know not to mess with anything like that. Um, I feel like it's been kind of, um, you know, people keep talking about it. No, they're everywhere. They're not everywhere. And whoever is trying to scare people with that, you know, I want to hit them upside their heads. So, you know, demons are not in every household. They're not in, in a lot of the different older places you'll know an energy that is demonic because you're not going to want to be in that space. You're going to feel repelled. You're going to want to leave. 
you are not going to want to, to, to be in it. And you may even be scared to death about it. So if you feel any of those feelings at all, get out. Well, you know, that's, it's, it's like, I feel like it's just been too publicized and, and, and like the stories and all that stuff, too publicized, too much. It's too much information that is not true. What's the scariest or weirdest thing you've ever come across? Um, I, the scariest thing I ever came across was a graveyard in Lynchburg, Virginia. Um, my brother, I was teaching my brother how to drive, and um, <laughs> we were, we, we got lost, and we ended up by this graveyard, and, and I didn't know we were near the graveyard. I didn't know there was a graveyard near there. We were just driving around in this neighborhood, and, um, and I kept telling him, we got to leave because there's something here that's not good. It's just not good. And he was like, well, I, I don't know where we are. And so we kept driving, and then we drove, we drove in down this one street, and there was the graveyard. And I was like, "Holy crap!" And he goes, "Oh yeah, that's I forget what he even called it, but I, he goes, that's where all the soldiers they used to bring the soldiers and lock them up if they had venereal disease or some kind of sickness that they would never overcome. So they locked them in that place. And the doc came by and picked up the dead bodies once a week, and I'm like. <laughs> We gotta turn around. <laughs> we need to leave now. <laughs> so we did. We turned around. <laughs> we found our way out. But yeah, that was probably the scariest place. I didn't even go in there. We were we were still like not even in the parking lot of this place. And it was it was very there was a lot of really nasty, heavy energy in there. Really hateful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There are some people, I don't know if you, you probably heard this before, so I do apologise. There are certain okay. people, there are certain people that believe that, that angels are possibly alien beings that we've misunderstood. Well, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of that. Yeah, there's a lot of ETs out there that look like angels. They, they're very angelic. They're very... Like, yeah, shoot, yeah. You know, as far as angels being ETs, yeah, okay, I could see that. But, yeah, because we're not the only planet in the cosmos that is intelligent. There's other intelligent life out there. There's intelligent life here on the planet. Go to Las Vegas. Go to Las Vegas Boulevard. Walk down the street. You will see ETs, aliens. You're going to see all kinds of different kinds of people there. And it is freaking awesome. Like, people are like, oh, I don't like Las Vegas. But, oh, my God, Las Vegas Boulevard. That's like intergalactic right there. Holy crap. Everybody goes to Vegas. And if you want to see different multidimensional species, walk down Las Vegas Boulevard. They're right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just um, I do believe that you know we are we're not the only we're not the only critters on the, in the cosmos, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of different species here on the planet. I mean, look at people, look at what they look like. They don't just look like they're dogs. Well, I st- I I started in the world of cryptozoology, and um, mm-hmm. when you look into cryptozoology, that a lot of theory about Bigfoot. Is that he's able to, demen- to tra- travel dimensions, and that's why it's hard to find him sometimes. I believe that. Yeah, when I I was um, camping in the Jemez Mountains um, one time, I was with my kids, and um, my dog was in the tent with me, and uh, we heard this sound. I have never heard a sound like this ever and uh his my dog's fur like was standing straight up and he was just like ready to charge out of the tent and it went on for a while it sounded like um they were calling back and forth to each other and it was a high pitch sound it wasn't like a mean sound or anything it was just like a high pitch call back and forth and I thought, oh, my God, because in the Jemez Mountains, there there has been Bigfoot sightings up there. And um, 
and I thought, oh my god, what if this is what if this is a Bigfoot? And I could hear it like throughout the valley, like it was coming from different areas, and then it was and then it was really far away, and then it came up really close. And I do feel like Bigfoot or Yeti. Um, I do feel like they're interdimensional beings, like they, they slip in and out. So, yeah, and that's how it's they're elusive, because otherwise somebody would have caught them, right? There are other interdimensional beings here on the planet, too, but the Yeti or the, the Bigfoot, you know, a lot of people can relate to that because they know about stories of it. Well, I, I have a theory. I mean, this is just a theory. But I think a lot of our abilities to tap into see, uh, the paranormal, UFOs, Bigfoot, it comes from early man because early man had to be more per- uh, perceptive to his environment. And that part of our brain is still mm-hmm. in us. And that part, some people are able to tap into more than others. I agree with that. I do, because a lot of people are walking around in a fog. They're not centered or grounded. They don't know what the heck they're doing. You know, um, they're just they're just uh, following a cycle every day. They don't even pay attention to their environment. And so I do believe that early man was more perceptive. And I also believe that there's been other civilizations that have been on the planet as well. So, um, and this is just one civilization that is happening now but i do believe that um yeah cryptozoology a lot of stuff going on there man that's that's a very interesting field and i encourage people to check that out because because thinking that we are the only the only human like humans and and animals and insects are the only type of living thing on this planet is silly you know, there's so much more to this planet than what we know. It's, so, it's still such a huge mystery to us. And um, opening our minds and, and our hearts to, like, finding out more, doing more research is an awesome thing. So, yeah, cryptozoology, it rocks. And now a lot of people think meta- metaphysical is a new idea, but they obviously didn't study the... 1960s during the hippie power era because it was more prevalent back then as well do you think it's because we're becoming more aware again a lot of the wisdom that we have now is very ancient wisdom it's old wisdom you know it's it, it it's from it's from way way back and uh because of um because of religious religions came about you know religions tried to stomp it out they tried to stomp out the wisdom because they wanted to control the populace that's what that's what religion is it's not about belief or faith or anything like that it's not about god it's about controlling the populace controlling money um controlling countries look at the catholic church uh that's all it's about they can't even get their pedophile priests in line you know so they stomped out the old wisdom. They killed people that knew, well, you know, more about the creator and creation than they would ever know. And so all the wisdom that's coming out now is wisdom that is so ancient, not even the 60s. I mean, the 60s just touched on it. It was barely touched. And now, you know, we have all our children coming in we got the psychic kids coming in, and the psychic kids have been coming in and coming in and coming in. They were just stamped out because of religion and the fear of it. So, you know, religion is a good thing for people that are in that space, and they need that. It's a, it's a step. But once you get past that, you know, that habit... And you want to connect more with your creator. That's when you really, truly find wisdom. Because connection to creator is love and wisdom. And so when you establish that connection and keep that connection going, all the wisdom and love that you will ever need, ever want, ever desire, is all right there in that energy. You know, it's not about books. It's not about... um, Stigma. It's not about 
like, oh, I have to go to church because that's the only way I can connect to the Creator. No, you can create, connect to the Creator just just by sitting and quieting your mind and opening yourself up. So I feel like the wisdom that that when they call it New Age, I laugh because <laughs> because it's not New Age. It's very ancient and old, and a lot of the stuff's coming up now, and I'm grateful and I'm glad because now we can practice outside. You know, we don't have to, like, hide in our closets or or the Jewish people do not have to make ex- extra rooms, extra hidden rooms in their homes to hide what they do. They can be Jewish. You know, people can be who they are, whatever. It what? doesn't matter as long as they're practicing and connecting to Creator. So so the religious stuff, you know, it's all new stuff. That's new. It's only like 2,000 years old, all this, the Christianity. Christianity is very narrow. Well, I, I, I know for a fact, I watched a program some time ago over here on Channel 4 about the, um, w- the women that were written out of the Bible. Yes. By Emperor Constantine, who basically didn't like women. And he No he didn't. And he didn't like the wicker part of the that was Constantine no, Constantine was actually um the son of a of a priestess. And so Constantine um what he wanted to do with the Council of Nicaea was he wanted to stop the Christians and the pagans from killing each other. So what he did was he brought in the Council of Nicaea, and they they came in and they created Christianity. That's where it really started. That's where Jesus um, was received his divinity. That's where the story started. Because, you know, in all stories of creation, there's always three. There's the mother, the father, the child. There's the, the creator God, the the creator goddess, the child, you know, so it's always in threes. So they had to create a story like that so that people would, they, they would align with it because it's something similar as to what they know, right? Yeah. So that's where Jesus received his divinity. That's where Mary received her divinity. That's where they all received that. That's where all the stories come from, you know? Uh, so, and, and people forget that <laughs> Jesus... Yeshua ben Yosef, that is his name. He was a Jew. He was not Christian. And they forget that they were all Jewish. And they had their own way of being. And so they forget that he was a man. That he lived a man's life. If you read the book of Thomas, you will see there, that's the reason why the book of Thomas isn't so popular with the Christians, because Thomas talks to, talks about him as a man. He doesn't talk to about him as this divine person. And yes, he was divine. But, you know, Constantine wanted to, the reason why that was called together was he wanted to um, stop everybody from fighting. Because they've been fighting for years and years and years and killing each other. So what he did was they created a new calendar, this Christian calendar. And if you look at all the Christian dates, you'll see that they line up with pagan dates or they line up with Jewish holidays. And so that way people could, the idea was everybody could celebrate their holiday without somebody trying to kill them. Constantine didn't really respect women. No, he didn't. I just find it ironic that... um all these times that when people argue about whatever religion you believe in, they always say, oh, this and that. And then I think, well, hang on. You ultimately believe there's a, a divine spirit that guides you, that you but yeah. you're just expressing it in a different way. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, the, they have brainwashed people so much that they truly believe that each sect, each Christian sect, is the best one. <laughs> and don't, none of them are the best one. They're all good in their own way, and they're all a path onward on, into enlightenment. And so 
there was more respect for other people's space and other people's belief in this world, you know, this, it would be such a better place to live. <laughs> well, I, I, I honestly think, because for my own personal experience, that I think that we, that I don't think there's a set heaven or a set hell. I think we, no. I think we have our, our, our own version of heaven and hell that we're given. Yep. Yeah. Because my version well, of heaven and hell would be different to yours. Yes. And, and, you know, we're already in heaven. We're here. This is our heaven on earth. This is, this is it, you know, so, so that's one of the reasons why I talk about a lot about taking care of the planet is because this is our heaven on earth. This, the creator created this for us. This is our schoolhouse. This is where we come to learn. You know, are we here to destroy it or are we here to create with it? You know, so people put themselves through hell, you know, while they're alive. I've met so many spirits that are so ashamed when they die, they don't feel like they're good enough to move through the veils. So they're putting themselves through their own hell. Do you, do you, we, do you think that we've been heavily influenced by... I'm going to give you samples of programs because my I, I, I mean, my wife likes watching these, so that's why I'm going to give them examples like Highway <laughs> Highway to Heaven and um, Touched by an Angel. Mm-hmm. I think these programs are very good in the way yes. that they tell the story, and they obviously they have a moral, like all things, they have a moral. But I don't think they tell yes. them. I don't think they over put it in. They don't force the actual religion on you. It's just basically yeah. about love. If you love and yes. respect someone, that is the way you show you your um, way you connect with higher beings. Well, okay. So angels don't have religion. They're not religious. Religion has created a hierarchy of angels, but angels are are not that. They're love. That's what they are. That is their energy. It's all-encompassing. When you are in, when you are with an angel, you feel loved and cherished. You feel, you know, like a superhero. Because angels, that's what they do. That's their job. Their job is here is to serve mankind. That's why they were created. They were created to, to support us and love us, you know. And so when you feel that unconditional love just pouring all around you, there's probably an angel with you, like, just giving you a big hug. So the angelics, you know, um, there's a lot of misconceptions about them. And a lot of people have romanticized them. They have specific focus. Um, I channel an archaea. She is, well, I tell several Archaea, but the main one is Hope. She is a divine complement of the Archangel Gabriel. And Gabriel is a messenger, and Hope is a messenger. And so they're the ones that go and, and bring the Creator's messages to the people who are, are able to hear them. And her message is of the energy of hope and love and kindness. I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you something a bit odd. You, I, I, your first name is Ariel. I just wondered. My first name is Ariel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but is that your real name, or is that your doctor's name? That's my name. That's my name. So isn't it strange that you that, that name is connected to angels as well? My my name is Ariel Grace, and yes, it is. <laughs> I, I, I sensed that when I read the name and thought, I'm sure I can sense that that word means something to do with angel. I have heard of it somewhere. Yes. Well, it is, it's, a, it's a name, um, the Archangel Uriel and the Archaea Grace are two angels that um, I connect with a lot for wisdom and balance. 
No, when you talk... And there is... Sorry. There, there, I think there is an angel named Ariel. I think there is, yeah. Now, when you talk... I met her. We, no, that's okay, I didn't think... Uh, now, when you talk to them, is it like we're talking now, or is it in, like a different form of talking? The angels speak... Um, the way the way I hear them is they have different... It's like a song. And so... I can tell when they want to talk to me because I can hear the song. And um, the song gets translated into words as I hear it. So it's like a, it's like tones. It's like, it's, it's a song. I don't hear, they don't, I don't hear them say exact words. Like, they're not speaking English, they're speaking angel. <laughs> That's the only way I can describe it. Well, I, I, well, as I'll tell you, as you may not know or may, may know, I've had a near death experience in my life. I had the blood sugar of one to four. I, I had a, went into induced coma for three weeks. And whilst I was in that coma, I heard a woman's voice I had not heard before or since. And I had an overwhelming need to wake up. And I seriously believe that that was my guardian angel. I know people can look up and say it's science, or I may have been awake, or I may have been aware. But I I also know that whilst I was in my coma, I was either in the real world or the next world. That's why I like to say, I, aka ghost man, because technically I was a ghost. <laughs> well, well, when people are in comas, they're not necessarily they're not really ghosts, but they are free. They're free of their bodies. And so they can wander about, you know. So, and you probably did hear your guardian angel tell you to wake up. Well, I seriously believe it, and I, and I, 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 that's why I mention it. Oh, that's what got me more into the paranormal because of this experience. I was never fully into the paranormal before, and I admit that I, I won't lie about that. But it has drawn right. me. It has drawn me more and more since, and I um sometimes get strange smells like roses or sometimes like like an earthy smell like death and uh-huh. i don't claim to be anything of, like psychic or anything like that but sometimes i can pick up on things like i i used i used to work i work in mental health and i could sense if people were going to kick off right well here's the deal we're all intuitive beings. We're all intuitive and instinctual beings. It just depends on how much information we want to know or how much information we can gather. And so that's why you've got these nosy psychics. You know, I can't stand nosy psychics. They want to know the color of your underwear. And I don't. It's like when I talk to people, I just talk to them. If they want a reading, I'll do a reading for them. But I'm not going to read people as I'm talking to them because that's being nosy and it's it's trespassing, you know. Um, but all of us have those those traits, that instinct and that intuition. It just depends on our lives and how we chose to live our lives and what we agreed to learn in this lifetime and how we agreed to learn it. You know, it's it's up to us really to develop it. That's why I'm always I'm always telling people, you know, if you want it, you need to practice it. And well, so, um, it's up to you to decide how much connection you want to your spirit guides, your angels, source, um, other beings that are roaming around the planet. So, you know, when you sit and you think about it. And you connect to yourself, you can see that intuition and that instinct. Whether you want to use it or not, it's up to you. But it'll kick in when you really need it. Well, I was speak- it's all in everybody. I was speaking to someone the other day called Marcia Kurich. Kurich? Kurich? I can't pronounce her last name. Anyway, uh-huh. um, um, I was saying to her, and she was, I thought I, uh, the same line. I think I've been awoken by this. I think I've, I've st- I, as I say, I think it's all interlinked because I started in the world, as I say, the cryptozoology, then paranormal, 
And then I'm slowly getting into the world of metaphysical and um, Wicca. And I'm learning more and more as I go. I'm not, I'm, as, as you say, you're forever learning. You're not, no, no one's an expert. It's just an, opi- right. it's just an opinion at the end of the day. Yeah. And, I, I, and, and sometimes I'll go on Facebook and I'll say, hi, can I help you? And I, don't cl- I always say to people, I don't claim to be anything special, but if I can help you, I will. And I think I've helped some people. And my, method, my mythology is, if I can help one person in this world, I think that's important. Yes, it is. It is so important. I mean, you if may... you can help just one person, it's so important. And also, you may not know, I have sm- small vessel disease of the brain, which affects my cognitive skills like memory and speech, and neurological problems that affect my m- movements and balance. I also have a mental illness called OCD but I always like to tell people I'm not the illness I'm the person and that's how I like to treat people and that's good you know because we are not our illnesses that is not what we are and some people will you know they they do that they become their illness and you're not your illness you are you you are your person the illness is something that is an imbalance within you. You know, whether it can be healed in this lifetime or not, who knows? But maybe you were set here to experience that illness. So in other lifetimes, you would have the wisdom so that you could see it in others and assist them. Well, I'll tell you a true story. My wife, uh, some time ago, had, a, 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 had some tr- trouble with her stomach. She had an um, infection in the stomach. She had to have five operations to to um to help it heal. She had to have vacuum sealing um pump on it. And she through and she seriously believes through her power of faith and a, a, a belief that, that someone's helping her. Uh, her her the the nurses, district nurses here, have been amazed at how well she's healed. You virtually can't see. She honestly cannot um, see the see where the operation was now. That's awesome! Awesome! Yay! Um, we're going to do a um, like a little um, talk about it because she wants to, because the nurses want to see how, what she went through, what it was like, what did she experience, to so it can help other people. Let them realise, yes, there is, yes, it's dark at the time, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. Absolutely. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. And sometimes the tunnel really isn't that long. Now, I also see you, you do Reiki. Yes. Now, a lot of people just think Reiki is like standing there with your hands in the air above someone's head going like that. You know, they don't... <laughs> You know what I mean? You just stand there. Yeah, I mean, there is that illusion. You, you, you got to admit that people do think that, don't they? Well, when I do Reiki, I actually lay my hands on a person, so my hands actually touch the person. Um, and uh, I am a Reiki master teacher, so I do teach Reiki. In fact, I'll be teaching Reiki with my brother Theo in Chicago in March. And I teach non-traditional and traditional Reiki. Um, I've seen, I've had clients, I had a client in um, New Mexico who was having seizures and she was blind in one eye. And after six months of Reiki once a week, uh, she was able to see and her seizures went away. Um, There was a man that was diagnosed with um, stage it was like stage four cancer. So yeah, stage four lung cancer. And, um, we were able to, um, clear out that cancer from him. Um, I've seen Reiki do some very miraculous things, uh, from removing headaches to, uh, ailments. And I, I do believe that, uh, it's up to the person to receiving, if that person truly believes that they can be healed, they will be. 
so it works both ways, you know. Um, I have seen Reiki people, like, not touching, um, you know, touch, not touch. It's still very powerful. It just depends on, um, I feel like it depends on the focus, and I also depends. it also depends on the person receiving. It's up to them to decide if they want that pure universal light energy to flow through them and heal them. So, really... You know, it's it is as good as a receiver is. Could a lay person like me go and learn Reiki? I believe every person on this planet should have a Reiki one attunement. If if every person on this planet received a Reiki one attunement, this place would be such a nicer place to live. Anyone can learn how to use Reiki. Anybody can. Because what Reiki is, is it's universal life it's universal life force energy. So it's it's energy that comes from creator. And each time you receive an attunement, you open yourself up more as a vessel to receive light so that the light can flow through you and out of you to the person that it is going to. And that's what Reiki basically is. You know, so each time you receive an attunement, you open yourself up more. You become a vessel of light. And you're able to channel that light through you and out of you to the person that is receiving it, whether it be you or someone else. I also see you like to, you mention that you're an author. And you do a blog. Do you also write book, books as well, or you just do concentrate on your blog? Um, I have my blog. It's Clarity 101, and it's on my website at arielgrace.net. And I do write. I do write books. In fact, I have. I've been writing a series called A Psychic Story, and that that series. There's four books now. Um, each book will, tells you a different, it gives you a different view of what it's like to be a psychic, and it also teaches how to help you in different areas. So, like, the first book I wrote was Haunted. It's called Haunted, a Psychic Story, and it's, um, it has, like, 10 or 11 stories in there about different hauntings that, um, I have been to. I have worked with and cleared out, and then the middle part of the book is about the angels that assist with the hauntings, and then the last part of the book is about how to um, deal with hauntings and what different hauntings are, especially like poltergeists. A lot of people mistake a poltergeist for a demon, and poltergeists are just, you know, noisy pains in the butts. And so a lot of times it's energy. It's just energy that needs to be released. Sometimes it takes on form. Sometimes it is a person that is being a pain in the butt. But poltergeists are very different than demons. And so that's why I wrote Haunted, so that people would understand a little bit more about hauntings and also have some tools in case they end up with you know, end up with a haunted house or end up knowing a haunted person because people become haunted as well. So that's haunted. The second book is called Angels, a Psychic Story. And the angel book is um, my, it's my connection. It's about my connection to angels and the, the angels that I work with and stories about how to connect to your angels, your guardian angels, the angelics, you know, what you can do to open yourself up to the angelic realm. The third book is called I'm Psychic, Not Telepathic. And that is the first book. That is the, that book is actually um, a workshop that I created called Clarity 101. And that book goes through the workshop, gives things to do, homework, lots of homework. And it gives you nice tools for your tool belt for intuitives and psychics that want to expand what they do. And then the next book that is actually available now is called Clearing with Purpose, the Goo and Cooties book. And that book is the next book up. It will assist you with clearing.
clearing your ancestral line. It can assist you with clearing yourself and other people. It talks about karma and soul contracts. It's it's a really good book um, for people that want advancement and want to be able to balance and clear out stuff in their energy field that no longer serves them so that they can make room for what does serve them, what will assist them. And so those are the four books right now that are available to assist. It's called A Psychic Story. You can go to arielgrace.net and click on the author tab. It's right there. You can click on each book and see, you know, what resonates with you. Mm-hmm. Now I know for also that you do your radio show, which I like the title of the show, A Gang of Girls. I've got this vision of you going around with, like, it, it, like the film, uh, like the film, um, uh, what was the film years ago, where they used to go around and they had to go um, avoid um, being beaten up on a tube. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, I've got this vision That's... that you've got all these, like, you got like, like these, like, like you look like stood in a gr- group somewhere going, "Hey," that kind of thing. I know he's not, but why did you no. come up? How did that title come about? Again, your girls' radio is. Um, I used to have a co-host, and um, she left the show. Um, I've had. I used to have a production company, and it was called A Gang of Girls Productions, and it was run by girls. Um, a Gang of Girls Radio uh, is also, it's it's run by me, um, and the 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 spirits that inspired A Gang of Girls Radio are actually my team, my spirit guides and angels, and they're mostly girls except Lord Melchizedek. Lord Melchizedek is a male um, he's a male ascended master. And so um, that is, that's why I've kept the name A Gang of Girls, A Gang of Girls Radio. And A Gang of Girls Radio is now on hiatus. Right now I'm doing Facebook Live events. And so I do Facebook Live events every Sunday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, United States. Um, if you miss a show, you can always go to arielgrace.net and click on A Gang of Girls Radio and all of the videos from the Facebook Live events are all there in case you want to check them out. A Gang of Girls Radio, as far as radio goes, is on hiatus right now. I'm trying to, this year I had to finish a bunch of stuff. Um, so I actually finished four books this year and I'll be finishing up two more books hopefully by the end of this end of this year so I've had a lot of things that I wanted to get finished and I needed to uh, to um, let some things go so I could finish up some things so that's what I've been doing and I'll be doing the Facebook live events until I'm done finishing with these two books and um, I'm done with uh, some of my traveling that I'm going to be doing next year. Well, I think Facebook Live is good because I use it now as well to enhance mm-hmm. my podcast as well. I think a lot of people yes. get to know you, get to know you, and what you do and how you do it. I mean, I yeah. I, 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 do, I I sometimes like to do uh, poetry and stories and things like that. Just something to be di- right. a little bit different because I That's like. Fun. I like I love poetry. I, I I know people think oh I thought I think well you listen to songs. If you listen to a very good song, it's like listening to a very good poem. That's right. It is, and it probably raises up raises you up. It probably raises up your resonance and it helps you feel better. Well, yeah, that's it. it it's the moment of time. I mean, recently, as you know, we got the World War One. Um, hundred years, mm-hmm. and in, I, I, I'm, I'm, I think if people read World War One poetry that's out there, they'll be touched by what people went through. Yeah, they will. Because there's some excellent poems out there. I mean, just look them up. There's loads online. It's even well, little. It's, yeah, there are loads online. Yeah, and there's even and the diaries out there. Are so beautiful. 
There's even little diaries out there, people, what they wrote back then, you know, that they found and they put on, um, I think there's a website somewhere, but I can't remember its name. Uh, that's got World War One diaries. Like people from Can- cool. Canada and things like, look it up. I'm, I'm sure I'm right. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I apologise in advance, but... No, I, I'm a great believer in being honest. I don't, I don't like lying because pe- liars get caught out. If I don't know something, I just say sorry. I don't know. That's good. Yeah. No, it's it's always good to be truthful. I mean, you're right. If you do lie, it gets caught out, and then where where are you? You know. So you should live your life as the best as, that you can and be as good as you can. That's. That's what I try to do. I try to be as good as I can and true to myself as much as possible. That way, I don't have anything, I can't say anything bad, you know? So, I just feel like if you're living your truth and you're doing your thing and you're not hurting anyone, rock on with your bad self, you know? Don't go out there and and be destructive. Instead, be creative, be love. Now, before I go, I normally like to do, like, I ask the guests, because I, I normally do, like, an unique sign-off for my show. Now, is there anything you would like to say, like, your unique sign-off? My unique sign-off is this. Everyone have a wonderful week. Keep your hearts open and align with the energy of love. I like that. Now, this is my one yeah. to you, Ariel. Are you ready? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you, Ariel, for being on my show. I like to talk about metaphysical and angels, you know. I'm sure they're looking at us as we speak now. And I think they've liked what we've said. So thank you, my friend. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.